Hello and welcome to this video lecture on SAM PowerPoint 3. Log into the SAM website at sam.syngage.com and log in with your student ID. Big Red is the student account I'm using. On the SAM site, instead of using the calendar view, switch to the activity list view to see a list of all the SAM projects that are still available for you to submit. We'll be doing PowerPoint 3 in this video. Select the presentation you want to submit, project you want to submit, PowerPoint three in this case. Five attempts are allowed. You're allowed five attempts per project. When you start the project you will see instructions one, part one are the instructions, part two are the files you'll need including the start file and any support files and then when you're finished you will upload your file for a grade. So let's get the instructions first. So I select download instructions. Depending on your browser it may open it up for you immediately, ask you to save it in a location or just click the save button mine saves it automatically to the downloads and then I open it once it's saved in a downloads folder. When you first open up a office file, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, or Access, you'll get the yellow protected view. Since you trust the source in this case, I'm going to enable editing and pull it up in its full format. So this project that we're working is Copper Harbor Land Trust and our starting instructions are the same as with all the projects. Download the start file. It should have your name in the middle of the start file, underscore one. Rename the file, changing only the underscore one to be an underscore two at the end. There will also be some support files and you should make sure that the file name not only has your name in the file name, underscore two, but also that the presenter notes have your name at the bottom. So let's go back and get that now. So I'm going to get this start file and open it. I have the yellow protective view that I'm going to enable so that that comes through. And I'll do those quick checks that we were talking about. I see NP PowerPoint 16 1A Big Red. That's good. Uh, I see this file created specifically for Big Red. That would be your name. And I want to do a save as and I'm going to change this to be underscore one to underscore two. And I'm going to browse and save this on my desktop so that I know where it's at when I'm submitting. So underscore one becomes underscore two. Okay, so now I have this file ready for, uh, uh, ready to be submitted when I get to that point. Let's go through our instructions document now and do each of these steps. So here's my instruction document. I'm going through each of these steps now one step at a time. Step one, you're developing a presentation for people interested in Copper Harbor Land Trust, which is actually hard to say, Copper Harbor Land Trust, which works to preserve land in Northern Michigan. Start on slide one by typing Copper Harbor Land Trust in the slide title. So going back to the presentation on slide one, Copper Harbor Land Trust in the slide title. With slide one still displaying, type Preserving Natural Resources as the subtitle. And make sure I type that correctly. I believe so. Preserving natural resources. Uh, they're using lowercase for natural and resources, so I'm going to match the case that they have in the instructions. Step three. Add a new slide two using the title and content layout. And then type welcome to Copper Harbor as the slide title. So add a new slide two. I do this by clicking between slide one and slide two and saying new slide or by going up to the top here and saying new slide. Either way I want to make sure that I first position where I want it to be and just looking at the instructions here it's going to use the title and content layout so I'm going to say insert new slide using title and content layout and that's what I have here. I can change the layout this way also to be title and content. On slide two, uh, oh, slide step three instructions say also type welcome to 
Copper Harbor as the slide title. So let me say that. Okay, so now I'm ready for step four on slide two, the slide we just created with the title, Welcome to Copper Harbor. In the content placeholder, insert the picture from the file support the harbor.jpg available from download from the SAM website. So I'm going to insert the picture here, but first I need to get that file from the support site. If you haven't already done so, go back to your browser and download the file from the support. Make sure that you save the file, don't open it in your browser. And mine is saved in the downloads folder. It might be different on your machine where it's saved at, but mine is saved in the downloads folder. So now that I know it's in the downloads folder, I can come here to say uh, insert a picture and go to the downloads folder. And there I will find the harbor picture, which is the one that I want to insert. On slide three, Copper, Copper Harbor Watershed, without using the content placeholder, insert the picture, the support picture stream from the website. So again, let's go get the support picture from the website and we'll click on the stream and I'm going to save that. So that's now saved in my folder here, stream. Go back to my instructions. Instructions say, without using the content placeholder, insert the picture. Um, and I will do that by looking at this slide three. And you'll notice there's no insert uh, helper here. So I do it by going up to the tab, insert picture. And then I navigate to the support stream file. And it is placed on the sheet on the uh, slide. Step six has these steps with slide three still displaying format the picture you just inserted by resizing it to be a height of six inches, changing it to an oval shape in the basic shapes, and uh, position the picture as it's shown here so that it's using the left margin, the left edge with a smart guide. So three things, six inches high, oval shape, and position it to the left. So let's do that now. So we're going to use the, uh, whoops. Uh, resize the six inches and then crop to oval shape from the basic shape section of the crop to shape gallery. Okay, so let me go back here. So the uh, six inches I can specify here in the, uh, with the object selected in the format tab there is a height, make that six inches. And then cropping the shape, I don't want to change the style here, which is what I was just looking at, but I actually want to go, the instructions tell us to use crop and then crop to shape. So this is what we're looking for. And I can see the oval is the pop-up there. And then the third letter, the third part of this assignment is to resize this so that the left margin uh, of the image gets the hint lines for our left column there. So I think that that's close to what we're looking for. I'm gonna get a little taller, but it doesn't really, I think the left is what they're looking for. Okay, so let's go back now to, uh, let's go on to our next step. On slide four, what we protect, add a bulleted list as follows. Uh, change the layout to two content to balance the slide and then insert content on the right to say waterways, forests, and historic sites. So on slide four, what we protect, change the content, right click and layout to be two content. So it leaves our left content, but it adds the new content on the right. And then we add waterways, forests, and historic sites as our content here on the right. I'm going to paste that as text only. On slide five, 
conservation areas. Format the text land stewardship as follows. So let's make sure we're talking about five conservation areas, land stewardship. So that's what we're going to be formatting. I highlight it to do my formatting. And the formatting we're going to be doing is uh, trebuchet MS headings as the font, 28 point font size, teal accent three font color. So font type, these are alphabetical. So trebuchet, well, there it is uh, as my theme. It's my heading or body theme. Let me go back and make sure I know which one. I want the heading theme. So I'm going to select the headings. And it's important that I get the one with the headings because that tells me it's a theme uh, font. If I change the theme, the heading may change with it. So make sure that you're selecting the headings and not just the trebuchet MS uh, as a fixed font, but rather you want to use the heading font, which is a themes font. 28 point and teal accent three. So 28 point, I still have all of land stewardship selected and colors here. On my colors, I'm going to have the pop down. I'm going to do uh, accent three, which is, I believe this one, oops, sorry, this one. And it's teal accent three. And this is accent threes with lighter and accent three with darker but they're just telling us to do accent three without the uh, further modification. Oh, and bold the text. Let me do that as well. So we've completed step eight. Step nine says, with slide five still displaying, use the format painter to copy the formatting from land stewardship to water preservation. So with slide five still, I want to take this land stewardship we just did and format painter, copy it to water preservation. You do it by clicking the format painter and then painting over the text that you want. And if you single click like I did on the format painter, it just does a single copy. If you double click the format painter, it'll let you copy it multiple times, but I only want to copy just that part. Okay, step 10, delete slide six why we protect Copper Harbor, because the same information appears on other slides. So here's slide six, why we protect Copper Harbor. And I want to delete that. I can just do that by right clicking and saying delete slide. Return to slide five, copy the word land, and then paste it into the text placeholder on slide six, how we protect. So go back to slide five, copy the word land, and then on slide six, how we protect, click to add text. I'm going to right click and then paste that. On slide seven, where we protect, create a smart art graphic as follows. Convert the bulleted list to a smart art graphic using the list layout vertical bullet list shown in figure two below. So that's the icon we will see for list for vertical list bullet smart art. And in the second shape, change the text white lake to lily lake. Do not type the period. Okay, so let's do this first part. On slide seven where we protect do smart art to change the bulleted list to a vertical bullet list. So on slide seven where we protect take my bulleted list and make smart art out of it. And I do this by selecting the text and under the home tab, there is convert to smart art. And we have a lot of smart art options here. The one we want has that shape to it and the hint that pops up tells us vertical bullet list, which was our instructions. I can close this window now. This is how I could edit this and change this if I wanted to, but I've got the list there and then part B is in the second shape, change the text White Lake to Lily with one L Lake. So White Lake becomes Lily Lake. And not the period at the end of Lake there. On slide eight, connect with others. Edit the slide as follows. Delete the content placeholder on the right and in the content placeholder on the left, enter the following multi-level bulleted list. So volunteer, 
outreach events, annual meeting and family pickup, a picnic with volunteer and events at the left and the outreach annual picnic and fam annual meeting and picnic indented one. I'm going to highlight all that and copy it. Then I'm going to go to slide eight, connect with others, delete the right content. Slide eight, connect with others, delete this right content by selecting on the outline and hitting delete key. And on the left, I'm going to add this text, volunteer outreach events. And I want this and outreach and events and, uh, sorry, outreach and annual meeting and family picnic to be indented one. Volunteer and events are at the main level and outreach annual and family are indented. Move to slide nine, contact the Copper Harbor Land Trust. So it becomes slide 10, the last slide in the presentation. So slide nine is going to be moved to become now slide 10, which is the last slide in our presentation. On the new slide nine, going back, uh, it'll be ways to give. Edit the slide as follows. Format the bulleted list so it becomes a numbered list, and then type becoming a supporter as the fourth numbered item. So the slide nine, ways to give, change this from a bulleted list to a numbered list, which I can do by highlighting the text and going into the home group, home tab in the paragraph group and selecting one, two, three numbering instead of uh, um, bullets type becoming a supporter as the fourth bulleted item. So at the end of bulleted three, hit return and type in or copy paste in become a supporter. Type the following text in the notes pane. We depend on your contributions and I think you have to do the period as well. So make sure you get the period as well or type the period as well. We depend on your contributions here in the notes pane. By the way, if you don't see the notes pane, you can go under view and you can click notes and it makes that notes pane at the bottom appear and disappear. So if you're having trouble finding it, that might be a way to make it show up. On slide 10, contact the Carper, Copper Harbor Land Trust remove the hyperlink from the email address. So on slide 10, here's a hyperlink. I'm going to right click on this and say remove hyperlink. And our last step, step 17, check the spelling in your presentation to identify and correct any spelling errors. You should find and correct at least one spelling error. Ignore proper nouns. So let's do our uh, review spelling. And it's going to go through our presentation. Charitable, charitable is misspelled, C -I, uh, R I T B L E. I was missing an A in there, so I'm going to make that change. That's a proper noun, that's a person's name, so we will ignore changing the person's name. And spell check is complete. Our presentation should look like the following. So it's got 10 slides with an image on two, an image on three, smart art on slide seven, no hyperlink there. And if I go back to my presentation and put it in slide sorter view, I will see and I'm gonna make it smaller so that uh, I get the size here. That looks kind of the same. I can see the Word document final figure and I can see the actual presentation in slide sorter view and they look kind of the same. So I feel like I'm about where I want to be. It's a good idea to save all your changes, save your work and exit PowerPoint before you submit. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a save. I've already saved this to be on my desktop with the underscore to file name. So I've saved that and I'm closing it. And now I'm going to go back to my web browser and submit my work for a grade. So under point three, browse to upload my file. I know I have it saved on my desktop, and there it is on my desktop. I want to make sure I get the right file here. Uh, and these file names are kind of close. I want the NP PPT 16 underscore 1A. NP PPT 16, uh, sorry, it begins with NP, not SC, so it's that one. 
I open it and submit. Should get three check marks to tell me that I've submitted the correct one. And then I go into reports to see what I have. So I will find PowerPoint 3. If you have more than one submission, make sure you're checking the time and date to get the today's date, the correct date, and the most recent time. And then click on report to see how we did. The report pulls up the PowerPoint presentation you created, and it adds a slide at the end that has your score. If we look at this score, we'll see that we made 100 out of 100.